Hello, I'm Dr. Ella Kammerdiner. Welcome to Discrete Event Simulation. This is Lecture 23, Entity Transfer. I will talk about types of entity transfers and resource-constrained transfers. So, the types of entity transfers that we saw so far were, were we just connecting something. So, when we use the connect, we always assume the zero delay, so it models a zero delay in terms of the transfer. And the connection or graphic versus uh, module labels, where we have virtually no graphics. And to create some type of animation for transfer, we also use route. And when we use route, we can also model non-zero delay where we could either do a constant, random variable, or expression for the transfer delay. We also introduced stations using the route and animated routes this way. And there we could either do fixed routes, which I showed you how to do in one of the earlier lectures, and uh, or also could do an entity-dependent sequences, which I did uh, more recently in one of more recent lectures. And again, when we look at the previous ways that we did the entity transfer, both connect and route assume that there is no limit on number in transit at a time. And this might not always be the case. And also assumes that entities have their own feet. So again, this assumption might also not be the case. So in order to be able to provide some solutions to this, we will introduce new types of entity transfers, including resource-constrained transfers. And resource-constrained transfers will allow us to um, have a limit on the total number of entities in transit at a time. And also, using the resource-constrained transfers, the entities still have their own feet. An example, telecommunications, right? If we're sending a number of packets from one point to another, right, that would be an um, example of um, the type of model that we could use resource-constrained transfers for. Another example is logistics, the number of vehicles. In addition to the resource constraint transfers, we also introduce another type of entity transfer, uh, for example, material handling devices such as transporters and conveyors. So, transporters are forklifts, trucks, cars, wheelchairs, and they usually place limits on numbers and also capabilities of transporters. And they're in a way similar to the resource, except they're movable. And as I mentioned, there is another um, material handling device, which is conveyor. So the conveyor also helps um, move entities, just like transporters, but there is a big difference between them. An example of conveyor is belt, hook lines, escalators, and freeways. So the difference between the conveyor versus a transporter is the conveyor limits the space on the conveyor and also speed. So as you can see, right, it's not the same um, and we would need to use either a conveyor or a transporter if we using a material handling device to transfer entities. And also when we look at conveyors, we will um, distinguish two different kinds of conveyors, non-accumulating versus accumulating. So we're going to go ahead and get started with a simple model, model 8.1, where we um, make some changes to our previous model of small manufacturing system. And now we'll have transfers model using resource uh, constraint transfers. So we're going to start with our original system in model 7.1. And we'll have the same assumptions in terms of all transfer times will still be two minutes. And the parts will have their own feet. So we'll also have this an assumption. 
so we won't need to use any uh, resource handling um, type of uh, transfer and no limit on number of parts in threads at a time so now right we want to um, make a change in terms of that we want to limit the number of parts in a transit so no more than two parts can be in the motion at a given time and if other parts are ready to go they must wait until there is a room to go so that's a key thing that we are changing from model 7 one is this limit of number of parts in transit and also you know if there are parts that are already moving, right? There, the other parts are waiting. So we're going to model it using existing constructs and we're going to think creatively. So we'll model space on a road as a resource. And we'll limit the number of units of this resource, um, basically limit the capacity of resource. So entity must see the unit of space on resource before beginning a trip and then release it at the end of the trip. So there are two ways to model resource-constrained transfers. And both of them use new transfer resource representing a space on transit ways. So we're gonna, as I mentioned, we're going to limit this uh, capacity of the resource and we're going to set the capacity to 2 in the resource data module. Because, as I mentioned earlier, we want to have only two entities being able to move at a time. And maybe most obvious way, um, but we won't do that, right? Before each route module, we can insert a seize module to seize one unit of transfer. For example, um, right, having the seize module, then we need to use a queue, have some priority details, right? So you can see more of this. Uh, type of way um, or how to do that using this way um, you can see more of a, on that in the arena textbook and after each station module accept order release we can release a re release module to free up one unit of transfer and so this is important because if we seizing the resource we also need to release it otherwise right we we will um, if you're not going to be releasing the resource the simulation will not be correct, we'll just be accumulating this long line because nothing gets released. And so again we could have shared versus separate queues and so more details of this um, in the arena textbook so we're not going to do this this way, instead we're going to do it in a different way. And if we did it this way we can't really animate the entity movement. So a different way that we will implement um, actually uses some new modules that we haven't used before. And these modules will be useful also later on when we model um, the entity handling devices such as transporters and conveyors. And so what we're going to do is instead of keeping the route as we would do if we use the other way, we're now going to replace the route modules was the leave modules and as the route was found in advanced transfer the leave module is also found in the advanced transfer panel and then we have in terms of transfer out we're going to seize a unit of transfer resource before leaving the station the resource um, or resource set particular member of resource could be um, selected and then we can specify the priorities as well so it also contains route module logic and options and we can get individual queues with animation for parts waiting to go. So it's a big advantage to be able to do the animation using this type of way. And not only we will replace route, but we also will replace station, right? So we use the route to route it to a specific station, right? So now we can replace the station modules with the enter modules and enter modules are also found in advanced transfer panel and this enter module will allow us to define the station right so in a way you know it's more advanced right so enter is more advanced um, kind of analog for the station module 
And there is an option for us of an unload delay time. And here we can just keep it as zero for this model, but that's an additional flexibility of using this unload delay time in our model. And in terms of transfer in, we need to keep in mind that we need to release a transfer resource, right? As soon as entity reaches the station, the, the transfer resource should be released so it's available to the next entity. And the effect is a slight increase in cycle time in the system. So let's uh, go ahead, before I talk about transporters, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let me demonstrate this in the arena. So here in Arena, I have my model 701 uh, uh, open, and now I'm going to save it under a different name. So I'm going to save it as uh, model 0801 from the book. And so I'm going to illustrate the use of the resource um, to constrain the transfer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here on resource under the basic process in the basic process panel. We have the data module called resource. And so in this data module, I'm going to introduce resource and I'm going to call it transfer. And it's a fixed capacity resource. Uh, and the capacity is going to be limited to two, as I mentioned, because we want to have only two entities moving at a time. So now that I got this done, uh, the next step would be to replace uh, my um, route modules, right? So here, and here, and here, and also uh, here and here, I have my route modules. So all of these route modules will be replaced with the leave modules. And for that, I need advanced transfer uh, panel. And if I don't have that available, I can click on template attach button and then click on advanced transfer.tpo and that will attach the advanced transfer. So now I have this, so I don't really need to do that. But in case you don't have it, that's what you would need to do. So the next thing, as I said, right, is let's disconnect this and we're going to delete this, right? And so let's replace it with the leave module. So right on top here of the advanced transfer panel, I have my leave module, which is a flowchart module, of course. And so before pulling it into this uh, flowchart area, I'm going to select the order release station. Also, this station has also, uh, well, Secondly, we don't have to maybe change this station. But for other stations, uh, we'll make the changes. So let me go ahead first and, and uh, change this to the leave. So I'm going to change this to leave. And I'm going to rename it as start sequence. So I leave the delay as as zero hours um, in terms of that, and um, for logic, my transfer out is gonna be C the resource. So here I'm gonna indicate which resource I'm gonna take, and I could change this to also set if I wanted to, and as well as or attribute or expression. Right, so if I use a set of resources, I could do that. And here I'm selecting under resource name, I'm selecting transfer. And in terms of connect type, I want to uh, route. And so right for, for routing, I can have the specific time and I could also have um, the station name, right? So because my leave is gonna replace my start sequence, a lot of these things are gonna be, right? So again, it says, so I'll just do this for now and then change it. So you can see in this start sequence, we had the transfer time and um, the destination was by sequence. 
So we're going to be using the, the transfer time, right? So in this case, it's a, it was a route time. So we're going to use this transfer time. So I'm going to double click again on the start sequence. Um, here, of course, I want to uh, route uh, instead of station by sequence, just like what we have, right? So that's exactly what we have in start sequence. And in terms of the moving time, I'm going to build an expression here, right, to get my um, transfer time. So transfer time was a variable. So variables are found in, under basic process variables. So I click on basic process variables, then I click on variable. Then I click on current value, and then under a value, variable name, by default, it selects factor time for me. But I'm going to click here and select transfer time instead. So now I select the transfer time and then say OK. And very importantly, I need to change the units from hours that are selected by default to minutes. And so now we have route, transfer time, minutes by sequence and that's exactly what we have here in the start sequence um, so again let me demonstrate that so keep in mind we're out we're using connect type as route transfer time and by sequence but we also in addition seizing the resource here right and we seize resource name transfer and that's again as i said is very similar in terms of the route logic right we have destination by sequence, we have route time as transfer time, and route time is a move time, right, for the, um, enter, oh, sorry, for the leave module, and again, units are minutes, so we're all just replacing the start, so as soon as I did that, I can actually delete the start sequence, so I'm selecting the start sequence, and I'm deleting it, and then here I can rename it back into just start sequence, and so, this just takes care of this, right? If I wanted to, I could connect it back to my station. And so the next thing to do is to replace the rest of the routes in a similar way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy the start sequence and then rename those appropriately. So let me delete this, right? And then I'm going to copy the start sequence. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to um, paste it here and then connect those two and then here I have my route from cell 1 so notice if I open it right it just says route from cell 1 right transfer time minutes by sequence so I'm just gonna copy this and then say OK and then I really don't need it anymore so I'm gonna delete it and I copied this name because I want to and I need to rename this, right? If I didn't rename, I have this error. So I'm going to rename the start sequence into what I just copied, which is route from cell 1. But the rest remains the same, right? We don't really have the uh, a loading delay. This would be a loading delay. We have only a moving time, right? This transfer time is a move, move time. So that's how long it takes to route the entity. And we route it by sequence. We're also seizing the transfer uh, resource. So that's it's just very similar to start sequence, right? And so now we're going to do the same things for the rest of the routes. So I'm going to copy this one. And then I'm just going to replace all of these, right? So I'm going to simply delete all of these routes and just replace them with the appropriate uh, leave modules. So let me go ahead and uh, paste a bunch of them, right, and then another one here, and then another one here. And of course, when I do that, that generates some errors for me, but that's okay. And before I forgot, let me right away connect all of these. So I'm connecting them by clicking on connect, and then another one here. And so make sure that your direction of connection is correct, right? If I did it the other way, it would not be correct. So now let me rename those, right? Because if I click here, for example, on one of the routes, now every single one here, except for star sequence, is highlighted, telling me that I have duplicate names. So I need to rename them appropriately. So this is going to be a route from cell 2. This one is going to be route from cell 4. 
and this one is going to be route from source 3. And so as soon as I did all of this, you can see that I no longer have any errors in my model. So that's in terms of replacing the routes, the next step is to replace the stations. So notice that we replaced all of the routes in our model, but um, are we going to replace all of the stations in the model, right? How many stations do we have? We have this station, order release, and so on, so three, so two, and so four stations, and also exit system station. So a quick question to you is think about it. How many uh, of the stations are we going to replace? Are we going to replace all of them? So this is a really tricky question, but you probably um, guess that if I'm asking whether we're going to replace all of them, the question, the answer is most likely probably no, right? So that's the correct answer. We're not going to replace all of them. We're not going to replace this station because we only need to, rep to place, right? So what are we doing? We're replacing the stations with the enter. So what can we do with the enter? When we use the enter, we can actually release the resource. That's the reason for us to use the enter. If we just left the stations the way they are, then we would seize, right, in all of these leave modules, we are seizing the resource, but we are not releasing it anywhere, right? This logic in terms of transfer out, it says seize the resource. So the enter allows us to release the resource. So the stations, the stations that need to be replaced are only the stations that need to release the resource. Here, no resources has been seized yet. So in order to release station, we don't need to uh, replace it with the enter because at this point, we don't want any resource to be released, right? Because we start with entity being created. Right, then it goes to a sign. It haven't seized anything before it reaches the order release station. So we don't need to have the entity release anything either. So we leave it as a station. But here, right, when the entity reaches, for example, cell one station, it means that it seized the resource previously, for example, in star sequence, right? Or maybe somewhere somewhere in another route, if it routed from some other cell that um is going from that cell to the cell one based on the sequence. So at this point, right, we need uh, to make sure that the entity releases the resource. So the answer is all of those cell one, two, three, and four, we need to replace them with the enter. So the question is, do we need to replace the exit system station with the enter? Yes, we do, right? Because it, to get transferred to the exit, right? Again, we transfer it through the sequence. To get into the sequence, right? We need to see the transfer resource. So at this point, right? The entity is transferred using the resource. So it arrives here with the, with the resource being seized. So we need to release it as soon as it reaches the station. So all five, right? The cell stations and the exit system station, all five of these needs to be replaced. So to make the long story short, let me just disconnect this for now. So I'm gonna disconnect it, and I'm gonna replace the cell one station with the enter module. So I'm gonna click on the enter and add it here. And um, of course it connected incorrectly because this was selected, so I'm gonna get rid of this, right? So you saw, I deleted this connection and instead I'm going to connect my enter to the cell one process, right? And again, it goes from the enter to the cell one process. And so the next thing, right, is to edit my en enter module. So I'm going to edit it so that it basically is the same as this, right? So I'm going to just copy this name here and then I'm going to have it is a station type station and then station name is cell one. So all of this I'm gonna redo in enter and the only difference will be is that I will also release a resource and I cannot do that in with the station module. So I'm gonna go into my enter one, 
changes enter um, module. So I'm going to paste the name cell one station. Also change the uh, station name to cell one. Um, keep the station type of station as by default. And then instead of having transfer in none as I have by default, I'm going to change this to release resource. So again, I have transfer in, I change it from none to release resource. And then in terms of resource type, I'm going to keep it as, as it is by default, right? But I could have had set or attribute or expression here. And then in the resource name, I'm going to change it to the specific resource that we're using to transfer the entity. And that's transfer. Right, so I'm going to select transfer here under resource name. So now, not only I'm uh, entering the cell one station, but also I'm releasing the resource as the entity enters it. So it completely replaces. So again, module name must be unique. So I'm just going to put an extra in here. And then I'm going to edit it as soon as I delete this. Right, so I'm going to delete this part, go back, edit out uh, the extra in and then say OK. So in a way, all of these other stations is going to be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the cell one station. And so I click on uh, this right, right click and then copy. And then I'm going to delete all of the rest of them, right? The cell three station and the cell two station. And the cell 4 stations, they're all will have to go. And they will have to be replaced with cell 1, and then I'll rename them. So let me just go ahead and delete these. And then paste my cell 1 station that will need to be renamed to avoid any problems. So I'm going to paste a bunch of them and then rename them and also connect them as well. So let's go ahead and connect. So from cell 1 to cell 3 and we need to re rename this again from my enter to my process and then from enter to process and here I'm going to change this one to cell 2 and more importantly change this to cell 2 and the rest remains the same I still have transfer and release resource and resources transfer and here I could have a delay for unloading but I don't really need to right so it's gonna have be zero but if I, I needed to I could change the delay specify the expression change the units to whatever applicable maybe minutes or maybe leave it as ours and then here also changing this to cell 4 and this as well as cell 4 and then OK and then for cell 3 I need to change this and select station name cell 3 and so this all works right it works really well and you can see now I have no problem here in terms of my enter and, and very importantly, I should remember to to change this exit system station, right? So I could do that by um, just deleting it and then instead pasting that um, enter module. Connecting it and then editing it because again, right, this is an error and also it needs to uh, have an appropriate station name. So this is going to be exit system station and very importantly station name needs to be changed to exit system. And now they're good to go. This all works and I can run it, right, and observe the results. So again, to uh, make sure it runs fast, I go to run, run control batch run, which is already selected there. So I can just click and run my model and I can see the results. And in the results, if I looked for example, for total time, 
time and then total time and then compared to my 7-1 model I can see that the time is longer um, well actually shouldn't be longer right it should be pretty much the same um, if you're just using oh actually it should be longer because I now are waiting for the resource to be seized right so it should be actually longer there so let's go ahead now and discuss transporters so now talking about transporter concepts um, transporters represent different things uh, such as carts, forklifts, they can be used to represent trucks, wheelchairs, people and when entity is ready to go somewhere it needs to basically be picked up and moved and transporter uses it, right? It, it represents this um, device that handles entities and moves it somewhere. So again, we use transporters as movable resources. And the activities that transporter can perform is you can request, then transport, and then free. So requesting is kind of similar to uh, seizing the resource. Transporting means you're transferring, using the transporter to transfer the entity or move the entity. And then freeing is just like releasing resource, right? Releasing this movable resource. So in a lot of ways, transporters are similar to resources, but movable. And the transporter selection rule, right, can be chosen, right? If we have more than one transporter available when requesting a transporter. And when freed and there's more than one entity that's waiting, we also could have priorities, right? For example, the closest one. And there's also two types of transporters that we're going to distinguish. It's free path and guided transporters. So we'll look at more specifically at free path transporters. And the free, in free path transporters, the travel time depends only on the velocity and the distance. And it ignores the traffic jams and they are resulting delays. The guided transporters we're not going to look at, um, but I encourage you to look at it more on your own. And the guided transporters can represent AGVs, intersections, and so on. So let's uh, change our small manufacturer system to include transporters. We're going to have two carts to transport parts, and the cart can carry one part at a time. The carts move at 50 feet per minute, and we will need to specify accurate distances between stations. So it takes about 0.25 minutes to load the part on the cart, and again 0.25 or a quarter minute to unload it from the cart. And so we're going to start with model A1 and modify it to build this model A2 that includes the transporters. So we're also going to create transporter in transporter data module, and that's found in advanced transfer panel. And the name of transporter is going to be card. We have the number of units 2 and the velocity 50. And we'll also have a default distance set that we'll take care of later. And the units will be per minute with the initial positions. So it's important to uh, keep in mind that the units right, uh, need to be consistent. And also, you know, keep in mind right, that the, those are the units that are going to be later um, applied to the distance set. We also can use the animation right, to animate the transporters. So animation picture for a card transporter, uh, we can just click on transport share button in the animate transfer toolbar and then select identify a card uh, pictures for idle, busy or inactive states and then um, draw or copy from the uh, picture libraries and then use the right point. So I, I um, encourage you to read more uh, information on how to do all of this in the book but in a lot of ways it's kind of similar to what we have been doing with other type of transfers and again you can drop it anywhere in the flowchart view and it will be hidden uh, during the run 
Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this model. So here, oh, let me go ahead and uh, stop my model and close this report for now. And so I'm back to my model 8.1. So I'm going to save this as it is. And um, because I'm going to modify it next, so I want to make sure that I have my current copy. And so recall that we had in the basic process and the resource, we had this transfer fixed capacity resource. We don't need that anymore. So let's go ahead and save my model as model A2, right? And that's what we're going to modify the model A1 into. And the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the transfer resource. So instead of that, right, we, we can just delete this row. And of course, if we try to run it now, that would create a problem because we, we're talking about the transfer resource here, right? But we don't really have the transfer resource. Well, I guess it still created the transfer resource. So eventually we're going to delete it. So let's instead then introduce the um, an advanced transfer, find the transporter and introduce transporter and then come back later to delete, right? So delete is a capacity that still kept it because I opened the uh, start sequence and it did have the transfer. So let's go ahead and do the transporter. So I click on the transporter, right? It's an advanced transfer. Again, if you didn't have the advanced transfer, you can always attach the template by clicking template attach and selecting the advanced transfer.tpo. And so then when you scroll down in advanced transfers, there is a data module called transporter. I click here and then I double click to add a new row. So my transporter name is going to be called card. So I'm going to put card here instead of transporter one. And um, so it's going to be a free pass transporter. And I have my distance set called card.distance. Uh, so I'm going to change the velocity here. And I'm going to um, have the velocity of 50 per minute. And then I'm going to keep reporting statistics. And also we had two cards. So I'm going to change the number of units to two. Uh, so again, card number of units two. It's going to be a free pass transporter. And the card uh, dot distance is our distance set. Then we have velocity, um, which is the speed of each card is 50 um, feet per minute. So I'm going to put 50 per minute and keep in mind that in distances we're going to be using feet here. Uh, so let's review what we do next. But we do, before we do before we do that, let me also um, show you something in terms of the anime transfer. So you can see here, right? We have the um, different type of um, toolbars available, and if I click, right, I can see what toolbars are available. So if I didn't have anime transfer, I can always just click on anime transfer. And so if we, we previously had the station and the intersection, but we can also use other type of um, things from from the um, anime transfer toolbar and specifically use it to model the transporters. So now that we use the uh, transporter or want to use the transporter instead of the resource um, for transfers. Now we need to um, change the leave module. So we, instead of request a resource, we're going to request a card. Um, and so we have to modify the existing leave modules to be able to request the card. And importantly, we need to introduce a delay of quarter a minute for the loading time, and that's again as in the leave modules. We will also have transfer out, and then transfer out, we're gonna change the request resource to request transporter, and we'll select a specific transporter name card. Selection rule will be small as distance, and it applies when more than one transporter is available. And in our case, we have two cards, so we have more than one transporter. And there are other selection rules that 
one could use to model things, including cyclic, random, preferred order, and also largest distance. So think, when, when would you want to use largest distance with a transporter? And we're going to save an attribute, right? Because we want to remember which card we used for later. So we're going to have this attribute card number. And the connect type will be transport. So the move time will disappear. And it's determined by velocity and distances. And the station type is going to be by sequence. And then instead of um, leave, we're going to have request delay transport and that would be more more complex more flexible right there's um, examples on how to use the request delay transport in a textbook right so we could uh, do request delay transport here we just change gonna change the leave so here I'm gonna um, go into my leave modules so I'm gonna start with start sequence and here in start sequence, delay before was just zero. Now I'm going to change it to 0 0.25. Of course, if I wanted to, I could introduce another variable here for the loading delay. And I'm going to change the units to minutes. And then see how here we had transfer out was C's resource. We're going to change this to request transporter. And now that we did that, it also requires a transporter name. So I'm going to change this to card. And instead of cyclical selection rules that's selected by default, I'm going to change this to smallest distance. And here I'm going to save it as attribute as card number. And that will help us keep track of which card we used. And so the next thing, right, is also to change this instead of route in terms of connect type to transport. And so again, that takes care get rid of the transfer time because now the time is not going to be just some specific transfer time but instead it's going to be um, based on the distance and the speed of the cart so now that i say okay i'm going to do very similar things here so i'm going to change this again just to demonstrate this is going to be delay of 0 0.25 minutes some changes the units change the transfer out to request transporter change the transporter name to cart so selection rule to smallest distance and here under attributes i can already select the card number so that's what i'm going to do so i don't make any kind of type typo mistake and then next thing is to change the connect type to transport instead of the route and then leave it by se sequence and then say okay and so basically I would need to do the same for some of those other leaves so instead I'm just gonna copy it so I'm gonna go ahead and copy and then delete the rest of them and replace them with my module that then will need to be edited slightly So I'm just doing these actions one by one. And this might be faster or maybe the other way could be faster to just make the changes. And importantly, I need to change this, right? So instead I am gonna change it to a route from cell three. The rest remains basically the same. Right, so all I need to do is just rename them appropriately, appropriately. So this is route from cell 2 because it's attached to cell 2 process. And then this is going to be route from cell 4 because it's after cell 4 process. And so now we took care of that. And also, right, the same here, we still need to change this, right, because instead of resource, we're using the um, free, we're going to freeze the transporter so all of that I'm going to mention in terms of the stations right and exiting the system and the stations we're going to make some of those changes so let's review what changes we're going to make so the type of changes we are making is we need to freeze a card right so we need to modify the existing enter modules 
And so again, there is a unloading delay. Uh, so we have delay of 0 0.25 minutes. We have transfer in free transporter. The transporter name is going to be cart. And this is where, very importantly, right, we need to figure out the unit number, right? We have two carts, so we need to release the correct type of transporter. So we specify cart number as an attribute, right? And that entity knows the cart number, right? Which cart it seized. So we're actually releasing the correct cart. And so instead of enter, we could have also did station delay free, right? It's more complex and there's more details in the textbook. Um, it's also a more flexible way, so I, I encourage you to read um, the information in the ARENA textbook and see the examples there. So let's go ahead and do the changes and uh, change the existing enter modules as we just reviewed. So what we're going to do is we only going to change the existing, uh, existing uh, enter our station. So we're going to start with say, cell 1 station enter module. And there um, we're going to introduce a delay to unload. So it's going to be 0 0.25. And right here we have units there um, by default selected as hours. We need to change them to minutes. And in terms of transfer in, we're going to um, free a transporter. And we're going to select the transporter name card. And because transporter card has multiple units, we're going to have to select the unit number. So here I can just right click, right? So what I did is on the unit number, I right clicked and then click build expression and then here right I know that that was an attribute so under basic process variables I have attributes and then I can select value and here's my card name right right there by default but if I didn't see it right I can scroll and see it so now I say okay and so now we know that this is the correct select the correct um, card um, and so we also need to do all of this for the rest of them so let me just go ahead and do it rather than copying it uh, just so you can see what we do so again 0 0.25 changing the units to minutes change the transfer in to free transporter select the transporter name card uh, in terms of the unit number I can build the expression go to basic process variables attribute value and then select card number and so that's okay for cell 2 station we also need to change cell 3 so again here is going to be 0 25 minutes delay so I'm changing the units change the transfer into free transporter select transporter name card and in terms of unit number I'm going to build the expression click on under basic process variable attribute and then valid and then card number and then do OK and then OK here again so I'm good on the cell 2 and cell 3 stations I need to go to cell 4 and do the same there so I'm going to go ahead and do 0 0.25 change the units to minutes change transfer into free transporter transporter name to card unit number is using the building build expression where I go under basic process variables and then attribute value and then attribute name card number and then OK so that gives me card number as a unit number so I'm just selecting the right card and last but not least to do the same for exit system station so I'm gonna double click on exit system station change the delay to from 0 to 0 0.25 units from hours to minutes transfer and change from release resource to free transporter in terms of transporter name select card and then it gives me unit number and there I build the expression and there I go by, uh, go under our basic process variables there is an attribute and then the value and then under attribute name I already have my card number and I click OK and OK and it takes care of all of these right so now we got most of the stuff done but we don't have the distances right so when we do when we define the transporter and at this point I actually can go back to basic process to resource there and I don't see my transfer resource anymore right so the transfer resource is gone I don't need it 
if I wanted to get rid of the variable transfer time, I could do that at this point. I could also delete the transfer time because I really don't not going to use it. Um, so again, can just click on that, say delete row, and here my transfer time is gone because we're not going to use the transfer time. Um, so at this point, as I said, right, we when we looked in advanced transfer and we modified the transporter data module, we created this card distance. And if you click on the distance that's right next to the transporter, you have distance data module. It already created this card distance, but there is no station selected there. So what we're going to do next is we're going to edit this distance in advanced transfer, this distance data module, and we're going to be editing the stations there. So in terms of the distances for transporters, right, we will define this content of distance set card distance, and then the distances will be in feet, right, because our speed for the card was in feet. And the distances we feet moved by parts are as follows. We have order release um, to the cell, right, so from order release to cell 1, 37, to cell 2, 74, from the cell 1 to cell 2, 45, from cell 3, uh, from cell 1 to cell 3, 92, from cell 2 to cell 1, 139, right? So we have all of these, this information there. And again, important to keep in mind that the units should correspond to the speed. And so bl blank cells, right, basically represent the movement that doesn't really occur, so the parts don't move from exit system, for example, to to order release or the, any other cells. So there is, you see, there is no exit system here, right? Or from cell four, um, part cannot move to cell one. So we only need to enter these um, distances. So we're gonna enter these data in a distance data module that you found in the advanced transfer panel, and it has a card dot name, a, car, a name card dot distance, and we're gonna have to add 11 rows, right? In when we click on the station button, was the beginning station and ending station, and also distance for these data. So you can see one, two. Uh, here's another two, so four, and then another three is seven and then another four we have 11 distances so let's go ahead and um, get this done again important to keep in mind that we have the correct units here and also the direction is implied and it could be uh, asymmetric so it's very important to keep in mind right that if, if we do have some kind of other movement for example from cell 1 to cell 2 and then from cell 2 to cell 1 as, as we see here right so from cell 1 we go to cell 2 that's 40 45 but from cell 2 we go to cell 1 and it's 139 so you can see that this is asymmetric distance it's not the same for us to go from cell 1 or for part to go from cell 1 to cell 2 versus for part to go from cell 2 to cell 1 um, so let's go ahead and get that implemented in Arena. So now over here we are under distance uh, module. I'm going to double click on stations and then I can specify the beginning station and ending station in the distance. So here first I'm going to select um, order release and then from order release we can go to, for example, cell 1 and the distance is 37 feet. And then when I click again, I can select order release and then also go to cell 2. And the distance there is 74. And then again, I can double click and select cell 1. And then from cell 1, I could go to um, cell 2. and that would be um, 45, or I can go from cell 1 to cell 3, and the distance to go from cell 1 to cell 3 is 92. 
I can also go from cell 2 to cell 1 and the distance is 139 and then if I needed to go from cell 2 to cell 4 then the distance that I need to travel or my cart needs to travel 147 and then also for um, cell 3 we can go to cell 4 from cell 3 and then that would be 45 in terms of the distance and we can go from cell 3 to the exit system and that's 155 and then from cell 4 we can go to cell 2 and that's 92 and from cell 4 we can also go to exit system and that would be 118 so now at this point we, we got um, I guess I missed one of the entries So let's go back and double check what I missed. So it appears that I might have missed this uh, 55 when we go from cell 2 to cell 3, uh, but I entered the rest of them, so I just need to enter for now. I just need to enter the 55 when we go from cell 2 to cell 3. So now I'm going to double click again on the stations. Um, Extend it and then go and add here uh, the movement from cell 2 to cell 3, and that would be 55. So now notice we only looked at 11 rows, right? We only introduced 11 rows, but um, just looking back or, or looking forward um, let me tell you that we're not going to stop at 11 rows we actually will need to introduce 14 more rows and have 12 12 uh, distances defined here in the card dot distance so right again why is there going to be the 25 rows i'm going to explain it in, in a little bit uh, so let's first talk about animating transporter movement so again we need to also add distances to animation so we would need to delete all all the route past animation objects if we had them but we would leave the stage and animations and we can add animated transporter distances with a distance button in the animate transfer toolbar and so again, right, we'll get the dialog uh, placement similar to a route pass. We'll select identifier card distance, have from station to station, and also options for rotating or flipping it. And we can single click to create from station marker and then click for corners and double click to create to station marker. And we can snap it to the grid uh, to help place animated transporter distances. Uh, we can also choose parking areas for transporters. So we animate the transporters once they are free uh, using this parking areas and there's a parking button in it from an animate transfer toolbar. So it's just like a queue animation. Um, so we could change it from the line to the point or the other way around. We can shift and rotate it. And the Cursor becomes crosshairs. We can click near a lower level uh, or lower left of station marker to start. Click for first point or um, head of line, and then more clicks for more points. 
double click to end or second click to end line. So it's very, very similar to what I showed you earlier when we discussed the queue animations when uh, one of the early lectures. So we want enough points of spaces for all transporters. And here we have two cards, so we need two points. And we can repeat for all stations where transporters could be freed. So again, right, when we talk, talk about distances I mentioned, right, that uh, those 11 distances that we just defined are not enough. Um, and again, right, there, this is because we're going to have some empty transporter movements. Um, so the ones that we had so far, they only for part of the movements along the sequences, but transporters might also move when they're empty. Right, so example, if, if uh, we have transporter somewhere at a certain station that just released, right, the resource, uh, or the entity just released this transporter, and then another entity in a different station seizes it, right, then the transporter needs to move to that station. So in that way, this empty transporter is going to move through different uh, cells or two different cells. And so, in general, we would need n times n minus 1 distances for defining a network with n nodes. Uh, so, some not possible, like I mentioned at the beginning, we can't really, or we don't really need to go from order release to exit system. And so, together, we need 14 more distances to define in a distance data module. Um, so those are that not, have not been great are those that we need to define additionally. So you can see, right, uh, we need, for example, the movement from cell 1 to order release, which here we have 155 um, as our distance, then from cell 2 to order release, right, from cell 3 to order release, all of these need to be defined because, for example, as an entity um, is re uh, releasing the resource at cell 2, right, then some other entity is now uh, able to seize it. And it's very possible that that entity is going to be in the order release, right? So as the first entity release, uh, the transporter in cell 2, then this empty transporter need to go back to order release to pick up another entity, right? And so um, let's go ahead and introduce these distances. So here, as you can see, we're back into the um, arena, and in the distance module, we have uh, 11 station rows, so we need to add an additional 14 rows, so let me double click on stations, extend it so we have more space to add the stations, and then double click at the end there to add those uh, rows that we need. And so first of all, we need uh, from all different cells, we need to go to order release, so let's start with cell 1, and then go to uh, order release and then we uh, change this to 155. And then also here again, cell 2 to order release. And that will be 118. And then for cell. Um, Three to order release, and that's going to be seventy one feet, and then for cell four, to order release, we're going to have thirty four. And then from exit system to order release, we're going to have 100. Also from cell 1, we need additional 
distances. So we're going to select cell 1, go into cell 3, this is going to be 92, and then from, well I guess we already did that one, oh okay, cell 4. From cell 1 to cell 4, we have 129. And um, that's the only one that we need to have from cell 1. Then also from cell 3 to to cell 1. I need to add uh, 92 there and also from cell 3 to cell 2 We need 129 feet distance, and then from for cell four, from cell four, we already have to cell two and exit system. We also need uh, the uh, from cell four to cell one, of course, and that's gonna be 55 feet. And then from cell 4 to cell 3, and that's going to be one, 139 from cell 4 to cell 3. And then we also need to add a bunch of uh, information for exit system because very often we release, uh, the entity releases the transporter, right, so we release the transporter and exit system and then another entity needs it either in cell 1, 2, 3, 4 or order release, so we need to add all of these, well we already did the order release from exit system to order release so all we need to do is from exit system to different cells, so we're gonna start with exit system to cell 1 and that's 121 distance and then we're going to have from exit system to cell 2 and that distance of 158 and then from exit system to cell 3 and that will be the uh, 37 feet distance and last but not least we have from exit system to cell 4 and that's going to be 74 feet distance so now we took care of all the different possibilities um, for not just the sequence different movement of entities in the sequences but also the movement of empty transporters when they're seized by another entity um, and altogether, you can see, right, that adds up to 25 different um, segments or distance segments. And so we have 25 stations here in, in this distance. And then again, as you can see, right, if, if you look at, if we did some of the, um, some of the animation for the transporters, right, then again, in the um, anime transfer toolbar, we we do have the transporter right so we could have selected the transporter and then place the transporter somewhere and then check the identifier and get the different states and um, select a different library if you wanted to um, so all of that, right, we, we could do in terms of changing and also changing the size factor to 2 
right? Because we we do need two different transporters. So we could have, for example, for idle, we could change it to something like this. For busy, we could change it to something like that, for example. And uh, if we wanted to uh, change the library, right, we could also uh, find open a different uh, um, type of library, right? So in this case, we have just bo.plb, um, but we could look for other libraries to use the pictures from, right? So I'm just demonstrating how we can do that. And again, we could have a separate separate part in terms of animation, right? I'm just uh, showing you, right, what we could do, right, in terms of different stations, right? So if this is a station, so I could select the station and place my stations appropriately. So again, right, this might going to be my station where I could say, well, let's say this is order release, right, and place order release station. And then um, have another station too. And this could be my cell one station. And I could move those stations accordingly to how my um, drawing drawing is, right? And then um, you can see right here the four distances. So that would be for route that we used before. I can't really use the route. I need to be using the distance here. So I would select the distance and then would choose, for example, from um, card distance, then change the station to order release and then cell one and then I can um, you know flip or rotate if I wanted to right select any of this you know change the number of points there right add the color and so on right so that that's another thing I could do and so I can click here and have this distance and now right um, my entity will be traveling through this. So again, I'm just illustrating us using this anime transfer toolbar. Right? If you don't have it available, you can just click on it and it again appears here. Right? So all I'm doing is right clicking and then selecting anime transfer. And this is what I've been using. So I'm just going to delete this for now because I'm not going to really complete my full animation. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this, but this just shows you how you can do this. Um, so let's, just, let's save this for now and review a few more things before we finish this lecture. So what we did in model 8.2 is we um, defined, right, we created this transporter and had the entities moved using the transporter. Uh, what we could do, right, we could also um, change this model into model A3 and refine the animation for transporters in the model A3. Um, so I'll encourage you to just look in, in the book, uh, in the book models, and the book models have model A3 where the animation is defined. Um, so why we need to refine the animation is because part entities disappear from animation when waiting to be picked up by a car transporter after transporter has been allocated, right? And that's something that we've seen, right, in a different uh, case. So the model logic is okay, right? We get the right answers, but animation is, is not perfect in this case. And so to improve this animation, right, we, we could do um, these additional things. So of course, you know, in reality, animation is not really flawed. It's okay when parts waiting before transporter is allocated. Um, but, right, because it disappears when the transporter is allocated, the solution that we can use is storage. And that's similar to what we used before when we had the delays, right? We um, had the storage um, for entity to reside in and to be animated while it waits for something. And here it's a card transporter, so we can get statistics on, on the number and storage. But the storages are not available with modules from advanced transfer panel. 
And so what we need to do in this case is use a lower level assignment modules from block panel. And so you can see uh, Arena textbook for more details on that. Um, so again, as I mentioned, please check model A3 towards animation is more refined. And I hope this is useful. You're definitely going to um, get to use this idea of transporter.